Right, welcome to Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program 2. Yes, this video was meant to be something different. It was meant to just be a little video showing the new atmosphere effects on Duna, but um, it turned out to be something else, something quite else. And it just shows, you know, after all this time of release, it's still an abs oh, it's absolute nightmare to actually do one mission in Kerbal Space Program 2, as you will see towards the end of this video. So first of all, I've got timestamps down below if you want to skip the build part of this video. There should be a timestamp down below to do that. So yeah, we're just building a simple probe that was going to go and fly in its little cocoon to Duna and do a little bit of landing. And yeah, nothing's ever simple in Kerbal Space Program 2, as you will see towards the end but anyway here we are building our little probe we've got some shelled solar panels there um, we have a little cargo section around it and yeah look brand new grid fins so I thought yeah we'll try these out for some reason they only work if you have your camera at a certain angle so there's the first issue with these new parts but anyways yes so I thought right we'll get some parachutes and we'll put them at the top now, it's not all Kerbal Space Program 2's fault for these issues. It is partly my fault, and I, I don't know. Maybe it's my fault, maybe it's not yet. I think it probably is. But anyway, here we go. We're building the interstage part of this now, which will get us to Duna and circleize. Circular. Circularize. I don't know what's going on with my language at the minute. I think it's very cold in here, and I can't feel my lips. That's probably the problem. So yeah, we haven't got enough Delta V here, but we have enough to get to Juna. We don't have enough thrust to wait, so I put a bigger engine on there. And then I thought, just to give us that extra oomph, I will put some boosters on, because we wanted a control ring as well, just to make things a little bit easier to control. So sticking some boosters on, moving them up a little bit, putting some, you know, separate separatrons on there, just to help separate them away from the main thing so then once we get the staging all sorted we are ready to go and set away to an encounter for Duna now I can't remember I, I'm thinking there used to be a UI to make it easier to do transfers in the new Kerbal Space Program 2 I don't know where that is now I can't find it I'm sure there was like a, a way of just skipping to the transfer window I can't remember where that is I don't know whether it's a Kerbal Space Center or what but I just did it manually I just went to the launch pad and went to do the 45 degree trick and I've got to say this map screen is really busy it's like it gives us a headache quite a lot just trying to get around the map screen but anyway then I realized I've got no solar panels on the outside and I really need to go and fit them because Without solar panels, I can't get any energy to time warp. So, yeah, they're, they're way too small. So, there we go. We'll just stick some on the side, save that, and make sure our stack hasn't changed order. So, there we go. Here we go with the countdown. I got a little bit impatient, so I decided to just skip, skip this. And there we go. You see the launch there. But don't worry, we will fast forward the video now. So yeah, actually this thing was extremely fast to get up and I didn't realise how quick it was going to be and to get my gravity turn done earlier, which I should have. But anyway, there we go. Here's more problems with the Kerbal Space Program. It just, rockets seem really awkward to control. They just wobble around all over. They don't seem to want to point where you want them to point. They are just all wobbly, even when SES is enabled. It's just so weird SES just acts so weird but anyway I think it's the first time playing since the grav the uh, nav ball changes color when you're in above the atmosphere and I really don't like it I think you should just keep it the bright color I know it's a way to tell you out of the atmosphere but I just I'm not keen on it I, I hope is there a way to change that back I don't think there is but there we go starting to ramble again so we're just going to circularize and then set up our orbit to Duna because we have got a lot of um, 
Delta V here, we might as well circularize and give ourselves plenty of time to do things. So here we go. I've soon worked out as well doing this mission that maneuver nodes are really not very if, um, accurate at telling you when to burn and stuff. They're really bad and it just ends up an absolute mess. So here we go trying to extend our orbit here and I was miles off actually. So I was like right maybe I need to start on the other side of, the, of um, Kerbin here. And yeah, that was the problem. I was I was starting at the wrong place. <laughs> so there we go. We'll get a little bit of an encounter. Just try and make it a little bit more solid. That should do there. It's a very small encounter. But we'll change it later on once we get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. So yeah, here we go. We are just moving up. Uh, tie warp into our burn. Which... Obviously, isn't very accurate because we've got to change engines halfway through as well. Well, just shy of halfway through. So there we go. Start the burn. I know it's always on the dark side of the planet, unfortunately. So yeah, just getting up there, getting to orbit, and try and get an encounter. And there we go. They're using one of the new engines here that extends. It's a bit weird because there's like quite a delay on it. But there we go, we're up enough that I will just move forward in time. There we go, to doing a manoeuvre on the way to Duna. I know this is a very fast paced video and I do apologise, but um, this took quite a long time to do and I'm trying to rush everything into one video that is not too long for people. So there we go, our manoeuvre is set to just hit Duna make our life easier and then we'll adjust it once we get in this sphere of influence so following the maneuver node it took us miles off yep that is how maneuver nodes work in this game now so just manually adjusting here trying to get as close to doing it as possible to save delta v not that we haven't got plenty but there we go we did it manually and it worked so there we go, heading off now into um, time warp into the sphere influence of Duna. And boop, there we go. Right, now we can adjust our approach. Just doing a quick save here in case I start messing things up. And that should be okay for some reason the periaps doesn't show up anymore on the maneuvers i don't know if that's a another bug or it's something i've done i don't know it just it doesn't show up. <laughs> it's just so buggy you can't even do a simple mission to do it i don't know this is why i haven't played this much because it's so hard to make this video it's literally took us about three or four hours just to do a simple doing a mission and you will understand why in a few minutes time but there we go look at that it is beautiful this game just beautifully broken is another word for it so there we go start our burn when it told us to start the burn and once again the maneuver is miles off it really just didn't know how much thrust we had and yeah it's just no longer we just burned way too late. Burned way too late for this engine. And, and see what I mean by the SES, you can really see it when it's when um, the footage is sped up. It's just wobbling around all the time. Why is it wobbling around so much? So there we go, we're going to pick a nice flat landing spot. I've aimed for this big crater here because then in front of it is that big landing, that flat spot it looks like. So I'm just sort of aiming for that big crater so we can stop short and be in the flat spot, hopefully. And there we go again, SES just decided to go on the wonk and went miles off. So we had to take over manually once again. Right, quick save time and then separate. And here we go for our new grid fins. Let's have a little try of them. Uh, yeah. 
they're brawling. One of them, for some reason, one of the four just does not want to deploy. I tried everything. It says it's deployed, but it's just not shown as deployed. I don't know what's going on with it. I don't know if it's actually deployed and just not showing up, or whether it's not going to have an effect on the craft, or what. I have no idea. But, you know, this just adds to Kerbal's basic program and it being broken completely. But anyway, I did make a little bit of a mistake here as well, which you might see. And I'm a bit of an idiot as well. So, when I designed this, I thought, okay, we'll just pull away from... We'll just take off the nose cone bit with the parachutes. That'll just pull off. And then we'll have our craft unveiled underneath and the bottom will just drop away and we'll have our engine to land with. That is not the case because I put, forgot to put Separatron on the nose cone. But I also didn't realise that it was a cargo bay and I could have opened it up instead. So I got to this point I realised there's no way to separate the nose cone. And kind of thought, right, well, this was a mess. We're going to have to reset set, and do the whole mission again. Because I did not realise this was a cargo bay. And I could have just opened it. Yeah, I am an idiot at times. Yep, there we go. See, I'm now figuring out. Oh, yeah, I can't. I can't do this. I'm going to have to revert and do it all over again. So, I did. I reverted, I did it all over again just to add a separator because I didn't realise that was a cargo bay. And look at this! The engine is just wonky. I separated to this stage and the engine is just, for some reason, wonky. So it's thrown off the balance of the thrust. You can see the little engines that are at the top of the main thruster are like extremely sideways to try and counteract the offset of the engine. Just why is it, why is it jumped to the side? It's not a quick save or anything, I don't understand. It's literally just, I've separated and the engine's on the wonk. But anyway, then we, we enter the atmosphere again with three grid fins because the fourth one will once again not deploy for some strange reason. And I think, right, okay, we've got it this time. The nose cone's just going to fly up with the parachutes. And the bottom's going to fly away. The bottom's going to fall away from the craft. So we'll point ourselves nose up. I think, right, we've got it this time. This is going to work perfectly. Set the throttle at 100%. Save the game. Separate the nose cone. And we can't escape. Why can't... Why can't we escape? Why is it not working? Why is it not working? Because I attached the parachutes to the main body and not the nose cone. Then I realised that was a nose cone. So I thought, right, okay, we'll try and open the nose cone instead. Obviously, once you quick save, the parachutes just don't work anymore for some reason. Which is just weird. So I'm trying to escape here. I can't get out the parachutes because the the solar panel the uh, <laughs> communicator is a, what is that called? An antenna? That's the one I'm looking for. The word I can't get my words out. It's too big, so it gets stuck on the parachutes. Why do the parachutes just not disappear, or why have they got collision? Why do parachutes have collision mesh? I don't understand it. It's just strange. So I tried this over and over again without success. Just feeling and feeling to try and get this right. I thought, right, okay, I've got to be able to get out of here. I've got to be able to get out of here. There's got to be a way. So we'll keep trying. Just get that off. Get that off. Try and go out the side. I'm holding the side control to try and find a little space to get out the side. And it's almost there, it's almost there. But no. And the bottom won't even smash when it, hit, when it hits the ground because it's only 12 meters per second or something. It's just, 
There is no hope for this little probe. <laughs> so I decided, right, okay, we'll go back to our earlier save. And we'll just try and land from space. See if we can get enough drag on the craft itself to land from space. So we'll do that. And then I'll counter another problem. So everything worked in the vehicle assembly building. The legs extended without a problem, but no, now they're blocked. Why are they blocked? I think they're blocked by the solar panels. So I thought, right, okay, we'll just forget the landing legs, we'll land on the engine, try and increase our drag by going sideways. And I thought, ooh, solar panels will help increase our drag since they won't break yet. Okay, solar panels won't deploy because they're blocked by the landing gear somehow. I don't understand what goes on in this game. I really don't. So at this point, it had been like two hours. I was really giving up. And I thought, right, we're just going to smash this into the ground. For the sake of the viewers watching this video. If there is any viewers watching this video at this point. If you haven't given up at this point of my stupid rambling where I can't even speak English. So there we go. Here we go. This is actually real time as well. That's how fast we smashed into the ground. So there we go. And I thought, right, we've got to show you the feature I actually came to see. So we just did a time warp here. And as you can see, as the sun sets, it now makes the sky blue. Look at that. There we go. We ended on the feature. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe.